Hey, Brian. Hey, Al. What's going on? Not much. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Cultist Black. Uh, watch the new video, Killing the Beautiful. Ama yes, amazing. Outstanding, Thank you. Thank you. Outstanding. I, from a guy who used to grow up on Bowie and Kiss. That's like oh, yeah. the ultimate video, man. Great. <laughs> great, great. Oh, yeah. I love David Bowie, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I watched over and over and over again your video. It, uh, like, image is means a lot to me. You know, so, uh, yeah, what, what does image mean to you? I mean, you know, clearly we, we put a bit of effort into that. Um, you know, uh, it's kind of, um, I just feel like I, I like my music to have some sort of image to go along with it, something to accompany the music rather than just being in a t-shirt and jeans. Right. You know, um, I feel like also specifically live whenever you go to see a show, I feel like, you know, and it doesn't have to be like what we do, even if it's just a band that has a lot of energy and moves around a lot or a light show. But either way, I feel like if you're going to see a show, you want some sort of visual component with that show that is going to pull people in and give people more money, more of what they paid for. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely. Do you feel, uh, you know, from your early shows to now, um, not actually money wise but you know you're using a little bit more pyro because i was watching live videos this morning from you i guess an older show to now you're starting to use like fog and smoke machines and stuff like that do you feel you're going to surpass that that uh, oh stuff? yeah you know absolutely yeah i mean we're going to keep growing um more and more and uh you know also you know i consider myself obviously i'm a musician but also kind of consider myself to be an artist and with that kind of mind state, it's, I feel like I always want to be changing to some degree and, and elaborating on what we're doing and, and uh, updating right. and, um, you know, trying new things. I, it's stale to just do one thing and no, not try new things. And so at any rate, uh, what I'm trying to say is, yes, we are going to keep growing. We're going to be adding things, you know, different things we think of. And of course, like you said, monetarily, whenever we have enough money to right. spend on some things. Because, uh, you know, it is expensive to to uh, get those sort of things to enhance your stage show, like you said, fog machines or uh, video screens or lights or whatever the case may be. Uh, it costs money. So, yeah. Definitely. Uh, do you have the, uh, a hand in the, you know, the concept of the video or the, is somebody else in charge of that? No, absolutely. Um, I try to have a hand in everything we do. Uh, you know, it's uh, kind of a labor of love and a, love and a passion for me. So I really try to have some sort of creative input in everything we do. So the music videos and whatnot, uh, we work with a guy, or at least the past two here for Nevermind and Killing the Beautiful. We work with uh, Jaden Frost Productions, uh, Jaden Frost, who has become a good friend of mine. And um, he uh, he's really great to work with, and he is uh, very valuable to us in the imagery department and uh, coming up with these visuals and stuff that accompany our music with the music videos. Cool, cool. Uh, now, do you feel your music, uh, you know, is a release for uh, the younger kids uh, coming to your show, uh, jumping around and stuff like that? Because like, as me, you know, I'm an older guy, okay? So- No, I don't believe it. Yeah, it's pretty impressive for a guy in his 60s liking Cultus Black. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, uh and you said you listen to stuff like kiss and, and david bowie and, and, and whatnot so it, it's similar in that way you know like you said the image and and to be honest i you know i like kiss too but i was a big fan of david bowie really oh, yeah. like i love david bowie's work and granted that music is totally different from what we do but there's still aspects of it here you know because i'm influenced by him right. um but you know that being said i know it's a release for me you know, and, and that's a large part of what art is, is expressing yourself and, and releasing things that you don't necessarily get out on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, you know, I'm on stage screaming and act, acting like a lunatic. You know, I, I'm not going to do that in a day-to-day, -day, you know, but on stage, that's totally fine. And you can get out that frustration and that energy, energy and that anger. And yeah, I hope that people in the audience feel the same way. And, and I know at least some do, because I have conversations with them. And, you know, they enjoy it at, at that, in that way that they get to feel that release. And, you know, uh, this is kind of off on a tangent, but I feel like 
the past couple of years when everything was shut down and we didn't have live shows, you know, I think a lot of people really came to realize how much it means and how much it is a release right. when you don't have that option. You can't go to a live show and you can't, you can't go and, and it, it's this community thing, you know, right. and you don't have that anymore. And you don't have that outlet. Like it's an important thing. And you kind of realize that, now, you know? Yeah, definitely. definitely. How long does it uh, take you to, you know, prepare for a show? Like uh, before you go on stage with all the makeup and everything else? Um, well, the uh, body paint that I do, you know, because I do full body and face paint, right. um, it takes, it depends because I kind of do different things, different days. You know, uh, if we are rushed to get on stage, I can get it done in 30 minutes, you know, uh, and just kind of do a bare bones thing. If I'm getting more intricate with it, it could take an hour, you know. Um, so, I, but I like to allow myself an hour before I got to step on stage to get it done you know to get all the body paint on and to you know do my warm-up and and be ready to go right right uh do you change the makeup every once in a while or do you i do yeah yeah absolutely um i um i change the paint uh i don't want to say every show and there's constants that i kind of stick to um so far i've always to this point i've done black and white paint you know, I've thought about doing some red and some different colors, but so far it's been all black and white. And I usually try to have this moon on my head, um, which, uh, you know, is a thing. And, uh, but aside from that, I do vary it up. Like I'll do like a negative version of the paint. Like some days I'll have like partial, whatever's white will be black, vice versa. Um, you know, in the music video uh, for Killing the Beautiful, if you look at it, even in that video, I've got two different, there's two different paint jobs in that video. There's one that's got a bunch of um, symbols on me, which are predominantly like alchemy symbols and stuff like that. And there's another one where it's mostly white and I've got what is basically like, what it's supposed to be is kind of like tree roots in black that are coming over me. Right. So yeah, I, I vary it up for sure. Cool, cool. How, how is it uh, sharing the stage with uh, like legends like Overkill and Prong? It was great. Uh, Bobby Blitz is a character. I'll tell you that. Uh, I had, uh, you know, had never met him before the tour. Um, our, our manager, Larry Mazur, was friends with some of the uh, Overkill guys. And so he got us on that run. And uh, but yeah, being out with them uh, was cool. You know, like I said, Bobby was a character. I got to talk to him backstage a couple of times and really down to earth guy and um, just fun to be around. Uh, the prong guys were cool. Uh, you know, yeah, it, it, it was great. And it was good to be able to play in front of um, all their fans, you know, because that's really like the big thing is we're a new band. So we're still developing a fan base. Right. And uh, so it's very valuable to us to be able to get in front of their fans. And we were received very well. Like, you know, there was some debate about, because the music's not exactly the same. There's definitely a divide between what Overkill does and what we do. Right. But, you know, our manager felt like if we got in front of them, that we put on a good enough show that we would turn some heads. And we did. Like, um, at the end of the show every night, I was able to get a good portion of the crowd singing some of my lyrics back to me um, who never heard us before. So I think that's powerful and that means something. They were clearly listening, you know, so. Now your uh, manager, Larry Mazur, um, quoted that uh, you're the band to watch in 2022. How does that make you feel? It's great. You know, Larry believes in us fully. And, um, you know, uh, we came to Larry through uh, Edsel Dope, actually. Uh, he he kind of helped us navigate to him and um whenever larry saw our videos and stuff which were unreleased at the time um and heard our music he really liked it and was very enthusiastic about it he gave me a call and um you know that's something we really liked about larry is uh his enthusiasm for the band and uh you know it's hard to find people that are like higher up in the industry especially right. that are willing to take a risk on a new band and are willing to work with the band strictly because they like them and they believe, them, you know, and that's Larry. Like he, he believes in us and he likes what we're doing uh, and is willing to take the risk of putting time into us, even though we're still a small band, all things considered, you know. 
Now, merchandising, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to do tons of merchandising. And uh, what do you have available right now for fans to buy? We have, uh, you know, basic stuff. We have T-shirts, we have stickers, we have buttons, we have hoodies. Um, actually, I'm wearing one of the hoodies now. Cool, cool. Excellent. Um, yeah. Um, we don't have an album yet. Uh, you know, we have the singles out. We're pushing towards the album. Uh, the album should be out by the end of the year. Uh, we're really just waiting for another big tour to pair the album with. Right. It was supposed to come out with the Static X tour, but the Static X tour got pushed back to next year. So we don't want to wait till next year, but we want a tour for the album. So we're kind of on hold, but it should be before the end of the year. Right, right, right. Now, when you do go out on tour, is there anything particular you ask for, like on your tour ride, or if there is a tour ride or any more? Oh, there are tour riders for sure. Uh, you know, us as an opening band, we don't really get a lot of <laughs> tour riders at the moment. Uh, you know, it's just kind of like uh, you stick, you know, you go dress in the bathroom and like it kind of deal, <laughs> which is totally fine. Like, we're cool with that. Like, we uh, we're, we understand our position. We're, we're still an opening act right now. and We're working our way up. So we will take our lumps and like it. But uh, yeah, as far as riders go, we don't really do a whole lot. But whenever we get a chance, you know, we just like that basic stuff. We, towels are good for us because me yeah. clearly with all the body paint. Wow. So if I can get towels and water, yeah, I'm pretty happy, um, really. Um, when the album comes out, um, do you foresee vinyl? Yes, we absolutely want to do vinyl, yes. And what's your feeling about uh, digital downloads? I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know, that's what, that's the way people consume music nowadays is streaming and, and digital download. And, you know, we're leaning into that. Of course, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple. Um, we also realize that there is still a, a very large portion of people, and some people don't believe it, but that want to buy physical copies. You know, they want the CD, they want the record. And um, you see that every night at shows. If you go on tour, they want those physical copies. Right. So we we 100 are going to do that, but we also you know for for everybody that wants to do it online, it's there too. Cool, cool. Uh, what's your feelings about when someone comes up to you and asks for an autograph? Oh, of course, yeah, we we do that every night, you know, and um, you know it's it, it, it's a, it's nice and gratifying that that people think enough of you that they want an autograph. Um, we've been very fortunate in that, um, you know, most nights. And I even say it on stage. I'm like, we know we we look weird as fuck, and uh -huh. people like to come take pictures with us. Come over to the merch booth, take pictures. We'll sign autographs, and we do it every night. You know, and and some nights we have a line wrapped around the building of people wanting to take pictures and and get autographs and stuff. So we're fortunate in that, and, and we we love it. Now, reading some information on you, you consider the the band a cult band, or what's your take on that? Yes, um, you know, we tried to, because again, and I'm not sure, maybe I didn't mention it to you. Honestly, I just got off another interview, so it's kind of all running together. <laughs> but uh, so as far as it being a cult, you know, you could say a family, a community, a cult is kind of a, we're adapting that term because it's a negative term, right? you know, and we want to take it back and put a positive spin on that. Like we're a cult and it's jarring to people, so it gets people's attention. But at the same time, we're not like satanic or anything like that. A lot of our imagery and stuff, you know, some people would think that it is, but it's not. Right. And so there's, it's something kind of cool about like riding that fence where, you know, people might think that it's one way, but it's not actually. Right. But at the end of the day, to me, it's a cult because it's the whole vibe that we have. And we have people, it's not just a band. Like we surround right. ourselves with lots of people that help us and that we consider family, we consider part of our cult that are, you know, the guy, Jaden Frost, that does our music videos. Like, he, he has a mask, like one of our masks, because he wanted one, you know, and he's like, I want to be part of the cult, you know, and, and he is, he 100% is. And, uh, you know, we have people that work on the marketing end that are the same thing. Like, they love what we do. They have a passion for this project just as much as we do. They're part of our family. They're part of our cult. And that's just what it is. It's not just a band, you know. Cool. Now, I was uh, showing some of your videos uh, to friends of mine uh, where I work and stuff like that. And they're not into, the, like, the harder edge, like the beginning of uh, the new video. 
right? Yeah. But once you hit the melodies and stuff like that and, and stuff like that, they started getting into it, you know? Like, yeah, for sure. Just goody two shoe, all of a sudden, like, oh, I don't like that. Oh, that ain't bad. Yeah, that's know? pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that's your hook. Yeah, that 100%. Yeah, that's that's what it's there for, to draw in people that wouldn't necessarily otherwise listen to it. You know, that's cool. Um, did you check out the other one? Because we just came out with Killing the Beautiful. All the videos that you put out. Okay, cool. Nevermind was the last one we came out with. And that one is more accessible, I would say. It's right. a little bit lighter, you know? Cool, cool. Um, you have any feelings towards uh, what's happening in the world at this time? Oh, man, there's a lot happening in the world, isn't there? Yeah, there is. <laughs> Not good. And it's it's been tumultuous for number of years it just seems like it's something different every day you know um and you know i don't i don't i'm not a particularly political person right. you know um i of course you know being an artist and and just who i am i'm largely against war and right. you know that sort of thing so you know i i, I would love if everybody could get along and we could stop all the war and the killing and you know it's it's terrible. And so obviously, you know, that's my stance on that. Um, but as far as like politics and getting into the nitty gritty of things, I've never been a very political person. I, I don't right wing, left wing doesn't matter to me. Right. You know, it's all kind of part of the same system. In your younger days, when you were a young kid, uh, did you collect anything? Oh, yeah. No, I uh, absolutely. And I, I'm still kind of a nerd. You know, I uh i was always into comics and video games and that sort of stuff and you know uh, i'm still kind of an adult child so yeah i still like a lot of the same stuff honestly um i was into transformers still am you know uh, yeah. stuff like that wow wow um what are your goals with this band i mean it's it you know it's kind of hard to say really you know you just my initial goals i guess because goals change right but my initial goals for the band were i wanted to start something that you know would be my own thing because i came from another band that right. you know i was compared to uh -huh. uh, you know other people and i wanted something that was my own that i started that we started you know as, the, as far as the rest of the band goes right that we could all be proud of that we started something and we got somewhere with it on our own you right. know and so that was a big driving factor and just in general just the the creative freedom to be able to do what i wanted to do creatively right. and um so you know all I, I feel like we've been successful in that so far um you know the longer route i guess you know long run goal would be uh i mean i want to get the band as big as i can you know I, when i was younger i you know i grew up like looking at you know old metal magazines and rock magazines and stuff and seeing right. the covers and like i want to be that one day you know so ideally yeah of course i'd like to get the band as big as we possibly can um but you know not at the expense of uh the art you know i we i want to have some sort of artistic integrity and we've also kept that so far there's been a couple of labels that that because we were shopping right. there was a couple of labels that were kind of interested in us but they wanted us to change our image and everything and we said no you know we're not going to do it um so i feel like so far we do have that artistic integrity um but um yeah i mean at the end of the day i'd like to be able to make a living with this i'd like to you know be able to make a living doing what i love cool. really at the end of the day wow is it disappointing that it's kind of rarity to, you know as a kid you know you, you got circus magazine hip parader and all these others yeah. now, now there's nothing left no that's that doesn't really exist anymore i mean there's like ap and stuff but yeah nobody buys that stuff anymore really you know right. and it does kind of suck you know and it's the same thing with you know we're talking about physical copies like i remember driving to the store buying an album listening to it on the way home and you know i have fond memories of just that you know right. just like waiting for an album to come out and going to the store and you know, it's kind of a whole uh, ritual, really, that is lost, you know, and I guess it's been replaced by something completely different, and it has, you know, downloads and stuff, but 
I, I definitely miss that, you know, those kind of, you know, rituals and those memories that I'm kind of nostalgic for. Yeah. Now, I purposely didn't go into your past because I watched some videos. Um, everybody asking the same question. Does, does that irritate you? Or like, that's purposely why I didn't bring up those other bands without naming anybody. It, it seems like you got, uh, you know, like when a person or interviewer asks you stuff, like you, in my mind, I'm saying, how many times does he have to answer that? Yeah. I purposely uh, did that, not to bring up. Yeah, no, I get that. And, and it's, it's true. Like, you know, in my old bands, that was a thing. And again, that's partially why I wanted to start this was because I wanted to separate myself from, I, I want to be my own man and I want to make my own, you know, lane in life. Right. And um, so, yeah, I, absolutely. That that is partially instrumental in, in why I started this project and, and got away from my last project. <clears throat> right, right. Now, now how'd you come up with the image? It's kind of a long story, but, um, you know, um, I was on tour with the band Dope and uh, Edsel Dope. Um, I was talking to him a lot and I was talking to him about starting a project. Right. And it was really at the end of the day, me and him bouncing ideas off of each other and right. um that's really where the seed of the whole thing came from um but uh yeah i mean like i said the whole cult vibe was something that we specifically thought about and thought was a good idea right and um you know he he thought we should have the word cult in the band name uh, right but there's so many bands with that in it so i went with a a, a different it, cultus is the same thing it means cult you know, right. but it's a different word, you know, it's a little bit different. So, but yeah, it, it all came from conversations between me and him and then me just sitting around and, and pontificating on it and, and just coming up with ideas. And, you know, uh, we wanted to keep, he really liked me in the body paint, you know, so we wanted to keep that, but I wanted to do it totally different from I had the way I'd done it in the past. So I basically have done it completely different <laughs> from the way we did it in the past like it uh and uh you know we did the masks um because we wanted something that was kind of uniform um but was also cool looking and uh these the way we we present ourselves might and very well probably will change over time because again i, I i'm an artistic creative person and i get bored if i'm doing the same thing so i i feel like this album cycle will look one way and the next album cycle with good chance will probably look totally different <laughs> you know that's cool people want that yeah you know so um keep it fresh you know yeah definitely uh do you expect the album to come out this year i do yeah and you know we we keep expecting that it's going to come out and things keep getting pushed back because of you know lots of different stuff everything's getting pushed back constantly nowadays but um we really, really do anticipate that it's going to come out before the end of the year. Yeah. Now, you have a label right now and stuff like that. Um, how are they? No. Nope. No, you're doing everything yourself. Yep. Excellent. That that's where it's it. That's where it's at now. Everybody wants to do it themselves. It's better off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's uh, we've been DIY since the start, and uh, so far we're doing all right. So. Cool. 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 Well, Al, it was great talking to you. Uh, it was a pleasure, man. I, you know, I was a little nervous, you know. In the oh, no. It's interview, you know, and uh, you're a great guy. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, same to you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, Shauna uh, hooked us up and yeah. uh, she gave me you and one other uh, interview today. So honestly, I didn't know a whole lot coming in, but I just knew I had to interview it at seven. Right. Got to be on Zoom at seven. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's great to meet you and uh, it's been a great interview. I appreciate it. Would you like to say anything to the fans in conclusion? Uh, well, I guess I should uh, plug our stuff. You know, um, we're on all the social media and we're on Spotify and iTunes. Um, basically, if you Google us, you'll find us Cultus Black. We're easy to find. We have a website as well, um, which kind of is a hub for everything. Um, that's just cultusblack.com. So yeah, look us up. You'll find us. Thanks a lot, Al. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Bye-bye.